We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. How to manage the, the good information in, in the online world? Martin, would you, would you comment on that and, and add from yourself? Yes, uh, referring uh, to the question, what has changed and what are the challenges, what are the, the pros of such situation? Uh, I can say from two perspectives. One uh, perspective is perspective of scientists, uh, uh, who is used to, to, to attend conferences and exchange uh, ideas uh, with other scientists. And uh, uh, this COVID situation has opened uh, scientific events to, to more specta spectators because uh, uh, usually people, people do not have uh, possibilities to uh, attend uh, every conference due to uh, fee for instance. COVID has changed that conferences became open. So uh, from my perspective, from my experience, uh, the conference uh, which was used to be attended by 150 uh, now have uh, more than 400 uh, attendees. And from the perspective of IT officer, uh, the COVID has changed uh, uh, a lot uh, in attitude to, to work, to, to, to uh, ways of, of uh, 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 elaborating uh, results and uh, it has changed in very short time. So it was a great challenge for IT departments in every place to provide uh, sources uh, to, to, for, for remote work, to, for exchanging of uh, information between different teams. So it was really challenging time. But the achievements are very significant and now people are uh, working better. This is my uh, 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 perspective for, for, for this, uh, for this uh, situation. So exchange of information has improved uh, due to COVID. This is answer for your question. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Jan, uh, besides being the backup and recovery software solutions company, as we can see from the, from the banner, you also have a lot of activities uh, promoting uh, different science uh, events. And you have the Friday dose um, uh, in your company that is a promotional and discussion club to, so, so to speak. So what's your perspective on, on the COVID situation and the challenges and, and the win situations for that? Yeah, uh, you know, in general, the capacity of this question is huge. Of course. So bring the barrel and we can discuss it uh, for a long time. Uh, anyway, everything moved to internet. Yeah, and so this is good and bad uh, because uh, on the bad sides, we definitely lost uh, the commonly known relationships. Mm. Yeah, so this closeness. Uh, and uh, also we a little bit lost control. But uh, after two years, we can say that, uh, that uh, we, we have this control back and uh, all the tools we have and we invested in the time uh, are focused on delivering the content, the knowledge, uh, uh, via an internet and via common tools. Yeah? All these tools, uh, uh, which are growing rapidly, like video conference systems, uh, where the people is earning a huge money. Uh, Indeed. Yeah, so for us, uh, definitely this is not a bad time. However, there are some bad impacts like the uh, tremendous change on the employee market. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's easier to get the access to developers uh, from the different part of the world. So it's harder for us to get this de developer here on site. Uh, anyway, we're trying to survive. Well, the, the, the times are changing, definitely. Our experience with uh, uh, educational school for young researchers out of 
50 researchers that were with us for five days when we have the closing session and discussions about uh, the next year's edition. Six, six young people from different parts of Europe uh, responded that they prefer the online version. Only six spoke. 100% <laughs> of, of these responses were we prefer the online version. And, and that was a very surprising uh, discovery for us. We have some responses from the, uh, from the online uh, community. Thank you very much for them. Increase of creativity, which might result in better and faster. And I hope I am able to... Okay, not, I'm not able to see what's written. Okay, but increase of creativity, definitely yes. We, Thomas, we know it from our own experience, how much more creative we have to be in completely different field of creativity that, right. we, that we never had to uh, employ from, from our side. Yeah, on the other hand, what is so good in staying at home all the time? Uh, that's that's for sure. That that's why I, I talk talked about the the shocking six people young people who prefer that because for me that's shocking, but that's probably how it's gonna be. Uh, the challenge would be e-learning, which is not as effective as normal learning. I would discuss that as uh, as a matter of fact. That uh, from my own experience of online uh, schooling with my daughter. I would say she was much more efficient at home, regardless of all other aspects uh, of school that are more or less positive. I think the learning was much more effective at home. Uh, and of course, much more stressful for, for me and my wife. Uh, uh, being open to new public over the world remotely, that's, that's our case, Tomas, new public uh, across the world, uh, new technog technological skills. Uh, okay, thank you very much for these. Would somebody from the panelists like to comment on something extra, new technologies? Yes? Maybe Martin? about e-learning. It depends how this uh, e-learning process is prepared and designed. Uh, the key factor is uh, quality of uh, materials and uh, methodology, how to interact uh, or build interaction between teacher and, and students. But e-learning could be more effective than, than direct contact uh, because uh, of uh, platform possibilities and, and uh, new technologies involved uh, and improving uh, learning process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any final comments in this part? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. It could be also hard because uh, we have such an issue to certify people around the globe uh, uh, due to different languages and the time we can spend with them, different time zones and so on. Uh, but uh, please look at the very important aspects that everything we're doing to be online is influencing the building of new infrastructure. Yeah. So it's a lot of investment and it's a question, is it pro-eco or not? Oh, yes, of course, there will always be pros and cons. Yes, Lydia? Uh, yes, uh, I wanted to say that online learning uh, can be a fantastic adventure and fantastic tool, but uh, there are two uh, important dangerous things. Uh, first is that uh, online learning deepen uh, some inequalities related, for example, uh, to access to internet, uh, tools, uh, etc. And the second issue is that for many teachers and educators, online learning is uh, only conduct conducting uh, everyday classes over digital tools, while we should go further and utilize all these possibilities uh, that, that uh, can be included in, in online education. We should work on more engaging uh, methods of learning. Uh, we should work on uh, additional materials, uh, promoting, uh, for example, uh, teamwork uh, in classes, et cetera, et cetera. There is a lot of things uh, we should do now uh, to, to go further. Of course, there's an ocean of issues, but 
with the teamwork, Tomas and I, we, we have good experience in our team. We have good experience with teamwork online. I mean, not as good as we would want to, but it's doable. It's it's doable, but it's new skills. Exactly, we 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 had to learn new skills, new motivation uh, for the kids and, and stuff. It's not easy, but I'm afraid we can't escape that. Okay, thank you very much for this for this part. We'll switch to the next session then. Uh, we have the responses for. The question, where do you gain most of your knowledge of climate change from? And the school and university, these are the real responses, I understand. Okay. So it's the school and university classes, internet search engines, uh, and basically that, all oh, right, that changed. So it's, okay, <laughs> it's changing in lifetime. I, I was surprised that university would be number one and schools. I would rather expect them um, to have uh, this one. Okay, so that's also that's also a follow up for the for the first part of our meeting. I mean, people, especially young people, I understand, are responding here, are actually using these sources. These are the sources of information, and and from that we'll go to the next question, which I would like to discuss with you now, um, how to direct society to search for reliable sources, we're talking about fact checking, regarding sustainable management of climate and the ocean, what kind of actions are required, what stakeholder groups or businesses should be involved and how? Who would like to start? Jan, maybe you? So you mean the IT perspective or IT business perspective? For yeah? example, hey, you know, IT IT business is one of the fast fastest growing sector, and there is a huge number of companies. Uh, there are some monsters like Microsoft, Google, uh, Facebook, and and the others, and there is plenty of let's call it plankton, so small and micro businesses. Uh, which are also which also have the could have the impact uh, for all of these aspects of uh, joining the knowledge about gl uh, globe about climate uh, and joining it combining it with with a business aspects. Uh, if we will imagine that uh, all these companies are spending billions. Uh, like in Poland, where we're spending 1 billion euro for advertisement. And if you will consider all these activities like PR, uh, like lobbying, like marketing, advertising, uh, if only percent of, of this money will go to uh, informing people uh, about scale of what is happening, uh, it could be tremendous effect. Anyhow, in IT, it's not only about advertisement, but mostly it's about investing and pushing on new scientists uh, to, to help business, businesses to build a new solutions, uh, which are modern, which are more effective, uh, which are not poisoning our, our globe. Uh, and uh, new policies of uh, what we're doing with waste uh, from IT, which is a lot. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of plastic metal and other, uh, other dangerous uh, and toxic uh, uh, products uh, inside. Uh, so it's also about internal policies and internal language and this awareness uh, what we're doing, how we're doing, and how it's affecting uh, uh, our climate. Uh, so definitely the combination of scientists, uh, 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 new events, and, uh, and business uh, should work and should help. Yeah, I cannot im imagine that uh, uh, these two, uh, two aspects or two words are not working together. Okay, thank you very much, Lydia. Okay, so we have we have the tools, we have the platforms, we have the sources. How to direct society to go and search for the, let's say, proper sources rather than uh, uh, fake fake information? 
Do you have any suggestions? A lot, a lot. It's it's a very complex problem uh, because, uh, well, firstly, uh, there is the role of, of uh, business, particularly uh, owners of digital platforms and media uh, that uh, currently are focused more on uh, statistics uh, of clicking than uh, on uh, responsible uh, and trusted content. Uh, and uh, this is the problem. Uh, some of them try to fight with, with uh, these models, but uh, well, there is a lot of uh, things to do. Uh, the second challenge is popularity of, of uh, movements uh, that initiate um, fake news. And uh, from this perspective, uh, critical thinking uh, seems to be strategic skill uh, and this is the role of policymakers uh, to change uh, drastically curricula of education. And the good example is model from the UK when uh, the program of digital education called digital citizenships uh, covers not only digital skills, technical skills as such, but also uh, critical thinking, uh, responsible behaviors, uh, online empathy, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, fact checking. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Any comments oh, on that? Oh, I will talk a bit about uh, science, but uh, not only uh, relation between science and uh, citizens. Uh, uh, we agree that uh, uh, we uh, have the, the complex system uh, as a mankind and uh, the strength of the system uh, depends on the weakest link. And if we uh, look from the perspective that we are living in the age of data, access to data and access to uh, information is the key factor of, of future development. Uh, scientists have, have uh, quite good access to data and information, uh, so we have to improve access to information for uh, citizens, just to strengthen our uh, capabilities for uh, the future. And uh, everybody talk about big data, uh, everybody knows this concept, it's, it's be has become uh, as a buzzword, but if we get a bit deeper and look what is beneath and what are the challenges, uh, now we have uh, to, to focus on veracity of data and uh, tools for uh, digging information from, from data and uh, how to visualize data, for instance. So we have to develop tools, we have to develop systems which are able to, to uh, store all this uh, stream of data, high volumes of data, and uh, process this data in smart way and provide good, uh, reliable information for citizens. And uh, we are working at Institute of Oceanology uh, in cooperation with uh, other institutions involved in uh, exploration of sea resources to develop uh, information system for such uh, uh, purposes. Uh, it's an ocean data and information system. And uh, this is a way to provide citizens with uh, good, reliable information for perspective use. I would, I would put it this way. It's a, it's a foundation for, for proper knowledge transfer to the citizens, but what about the communication tools? Uh, Tomasz, we, we have the workshops with, uh, with general public and, and students uh, of all ages in our institute, and we certainly always refer to, to the good sources, right? So that's one way of doing it, just giving an example from our own side. So would you comment on that? That's, that's the point. Uh, the building and access is uh, one way, but uh, we need to uh, build up uh, a need for, for this knowledge uh, in, uh, in society. Uh, how to do it? Maybe uh, with uh, involving people with uh, dealing with uh, environmental issues, like, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, citizen science. You projects. mean the concept of citizen science, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, and we, we, we also do it in our institute, it's at the early stages, but, but would you say that it works as a, as a good way of, of, of uh, transferring knowledge? This is a good way, but I need, we, we have to uh, make it up. 
Okay. Well, one other thing I and I, I thought about it once I read this um, uh, this comment here: introducing school programs dedicated to teaching fact-checking approach to gathering knowledge. That's one way uh, of of uh, that, that that's one concept that is obvious to me, but also the the concept of co-creation in in schools. And I would say, I'm afraid that from our perspective, we all agree that there is very little fact checking in our school system. There is very little uh, teaching fact checking uh, uh, by, by dur during our process of education, but also co-creation is, is, uh, is a very important concept, I believe. Uh, when, we, when we have our workshops in the Institute, it's mostly that the, the students create their own uh, projects we're just uh, the assisting people for that. And, and it's co-creation in a sense that they do it and we, we sort of keep a hand on that, that, that it's going in the right uh, direction. And I think this is a really good way of, of learning something by experience, yeah? Learning by experience. Would somebody like to comment on that? Yeah, maybe. Yes, I, I observe that our quite old fashioned model uh, of transmissional education, which is based uh, on simply transmission of knowledge from teacher to uh, students, uh, is uh, completely outdated and uh, currently uh, such skill like uh, finding reliable sources uh, should be should be a part of every discipline and every subject at school. You, somebody else, Jan. Yeah, you know, I was uh, uh, really surprised uh, with this research you did, and and the results uh, because I thought that everybody will answer. I, I grab this knowledge from YouTube or the other social media. Yeah? If there was a university on the second place, so what you're doing is good and effective. Let's uh, see. I know you are famous on the north of our country. <laughs> uh, not only. Not why only. this play didn't land on the south still. Uh, but it's, it's really surprising and, uh, and something is changing definitely. Uh, but internet is still on the first place. I would like the second be the first. Well, but the, the question is, whose fault is that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, the internet provides an, an attractive and up-to-date uh, style of information transfer versus and very often old-fashioned teaching from the universities, right? So, Internet no universities. Exactly. Yes. What can what can we do about that? I don't know. It's probably evolution that needs to be introduced. Um, okay. Do we all agree that this is? I, I, I guess we do agree that this is a, an important or the crucial element of our future, especially if we discuss the sustainable management of climate and the ocean. Because if people still think in terms of of uh, wrong uh information then then we are doomed with with the actions right because such such people will be making wrong choices while they go to vote for the decision makers for the next four years or so and 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 re they really have to make they they have to make proper choices right so this is really crucial uh, i believe any final thoughts on that martin maybe like the, the climate is sustainable management of climate and the ocean and any other issues we could we could discuss here. Uh, one thing got into my mind when I show this chart that, that uh, people are used to get the information and further knowledge from internet that is a great responsibility for uh, content providers to provide a really good uh, high quality, reliable uh, material for, for users, just to, to keep them, uh, to enable them with uh, good knowledge and good information. Um, about technologies, uh, because of the volume of data and because of the uh, 
new approach to 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 travel, for instance, or, or uh, personal presence in some events. Uh, more and more importance get uh, capability of remote command and control of experiment, which also provide uh, new possibilities for students uh, like virtual laboratories and uh, online uh, data, which is most uh, which is more interest interested interesting uh, for people than some uh, test uh, examples or, or artificial data just to solve some equation and, and, and uh, examine some mechanism. It's much better to use the real data in real world and, and uh, see uh, instant effects of your calculations, for instance. Yes, I, f I fully agree. And, and one more thing, it, it hasn't been said explicitly in this discussion, but I think it, it's hidden in everybody's uh, opinion. Uh, referring to your own experience, uh, we all have our own experience. I, I'm uh, experienced enough, so to say, that I remember uh, that winter was completely different uh, 40, 50 years ago. I learned to ski in Sopot, Poland. Yeah, I learned to skate in Sopot, Poland, not at the artificial skating rink. It's in the ponds in the forest, right? And uh, my kids are not able to do it anymore. So, so referring to this kind of uh, like your own experience, uh, especially with with people uh, widely speaking our age, that that makes already sense. Yeah, I mean, how how can you say that climate is not changing? Think about your childhood and your grandchildren or your children's childhood. Completely different type of activities, outside activities that that I remember. Uh, are present for for our kids now yeah so that's that's also one of the one one of the points that we can we can sell in talking about the management sustainable management of the of the ocean and the the climate change i would say okay thank you very much so that would be the end of the second part and we are reaching the third part i'll read the question what kind of competences are required from various actors, scientists, educators, IT companies, youth? Uh, do we see the, uh, the need for the holistic approach to, to follow the, the sustainable development agenda? And this is that we launched online. Have you ever heard about sustainable development? And I see that we have a deuce here. Null, null, okay. I, I'm pretty sure, ah, okay, now we have one and one. So, wow, I think suspiciously even. Seems like somebody, somebody decided to play the game on us or what? Who will win? Who will win, yes. Oh, yes, okay, so. Definitely, we have the yet. Uh, uh, are catching up. Okay, we could we could probably play some money on that now. So, have you ever heard about sustainable development? We have more yeses than noes, even though not that many. And here is the question once again: What kind of competences are required from various actors for the holistic approach to sustainable development goals? Um, I understand that when once once we talk about sustainable development, we, we have the, the, the idea of develop sustainable development goals in our mind, uh, the variety of issues that are involved in that, uh, but the, also the interconnection of all the sustainable uh, development goals uh, and uh, interactions between them. We have the number 13 for climate change. We have number 14 for the deep ocean. So the interactions are uh, everywhere. Would we like to say something about that? Impact on people, knowledge presence. Uh, who would like to comment uh, on that question? What kind of um, competences are required? Lydia, would you like to start? And from different stakeholder groups or, I mean, just, just give, you, give us your perspective. I think this question is is really challenging because the process of building That's our a challenge. sustainable development is, is a challenge. Very complex. 
And uh, I think that uh, when we start uh, from the top and from uh, policymakers' approaches, uh, I think that here uh, the crucial thing and uh, crucial skill is ability to collaborate uh, to be uh, in a dialogue with different stakeholders and uh, to exchange uh, experience and best practices internationally. Because on the one hand, we have such international agendas like uh, uh, SDGs or European Green Deal. But uh, on the other hand, we see uh, very different national uh, approaches uh, and very different levels of, of interest in uh, such topics. So uh, I believe that sharing knowledge uh, internationally and discussions with all involved stakeholders uh, like uh, NGOs, like uh, uh, academia uh, like business uh, will bring uh, more detailed uh, actions and plans and strategies uh, that will help to move forward okay but would you would you consider creating i don't know like multi stakeholder platforms where scientists educators decision makers uh, general members of general public meet and discuss things or how, how would you? It would be it would be a great idea because uh, from the perspective of citizens, it will allow to monitor uh, what is discussed uh, and uh, what is the current topic, etc. Uh, while from the perspective of policymakers, it would be a great tool to gather uh, opinion and to engage people and to make them more aware and. Uh, this is this is really a good idea. What's more, from the perspective of academia, uh, it uh, it will enhance social role of universities uh, or uh, research institutes. So I think that such such a platform involving everybody uh, would be excellent. But you know. It it's a problem. Uh, my own experience with uh, working at the UN was uh, that as a researcher, whenever I, I was uh, dealt, I, I dealt with the ocean and climate change issues, I could always say that at our best knowledge that we have now, I can tell you this or that. And the decision makers on the other side of the back, they always say like, I want numbers. We want numbers because then we can refer to them and, and, and propose some solutions. And then, then my response is always like, you know, my numbers may not be correct numbers because they're with, with a certain amount of error that is built on each of the information that I'm passing to you. So, and then the, the communication was weakening and weakening. Martin, would you, would you comment on that? We, we, we have very good data. But we can never say that this is basically, we can never say that this is it in 2050, based on our data, the world will explode, for example. Uh, yes, of course, because we have uh, to talk about uh, prob probability of some scenarios. Uh, but I would also, uh, I would like to point that the United Nations claim a decade of uh, oceanographic sciences for sustainable development. So oceanographic sciences and sustainable development is uh, linked uh, together in some way. And uh, this is good because uh, oceanography is uh, very multidisciplinary and uh, uh, data is very heterogeneous, it's coming from different uh, scientific disciplines. So uh, oceanographers have to develop a holistic approach to uh, research, oceanographic research. And uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, very important to, to, to provide good sources of uh, data, uh, heterogeneous data and uh, tools for integration uh, or provide interoperability of this data just to, to ensure this uh, or foster this holistic approach to, to uh, 
information about uh, environment and uh, how this environment is changing because this change uh, is uh, caused by different uh, factors of this environment so living resources of uh, ocean and uh, uh, change of physical conditions for ocean uh, are linked together and influ make influence each other. So uh, scientists have to make a wider perspective on the state of the environment and ensure this holistic approach in, in uh, research. Uh, if they are able to do this, uh, they can make a higher uh, probability, estimate higher probability of scenarios. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, since you mentioned that the ocean um, decade, uh, oceans, a decade of ocean science for sustainable development, uh, it's very important uh, that uh, the foundation for that is that uh, it's multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and multi stakeholder um, uh, activities for the next uh, 10 years of studying the ocean and all the uh, processes that are linked with the, the atmosphere, hence climate change. But, but what is very important is the, the connection to the social uh, part of that. That means the connection of, of humans with the ocean and the impact of ocean on the humans and, and vice versa. So this is, this is really, I, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for, for the outcome of the, of the decade because it's for the first time very strongly uh, stated that humans are the recipients of all the data that we produce. Uh, Thomas, in our, in our activities, educational activities and, and communication activities, we, we put a lot of stress on, on passing the information to, to the workshop participants, right? Right. Uh Stakeholders need uh, numbers and uh, direct scenarios, but uh, general public uh, needs to uh, wide, uh, wide knowledge. Uh, this is uh, very important to learn. I mean, uh, learn uh, uh, scientists to communicate. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's, that's, that's another issue. How scientists should learn how to communicate. That's for sure. Uh, Jan, your perspective on that, you do a lot of, for, I, I would say, excuse me for that, for the IT company, you do hell a lot of uh, promotional activities and promoting all sorts of uh, scientific endeavors and stuff. So would you, would you comment? Why do you do that? Yeah, probably it's still the, uh, the space for improvement, uh, but we're trying. But uh, as Lydia said, uh, the topic is pretty complex. Uh, and to make the long story short, I'm dividing it into three layers. Uh, so first of all, it's self-awareness. Uh, so I need to understand what are the processes. I need to be aware what is happening with the climate, what is happening with forests, uh, oceans, seas, and so on. And then I can go to the holistic approach to my company. Yeah, as the owner, I can implement a number of tools uh, starting from internal processes like saving on the water, electricity, paper, and so on, or to invest in, in modern infrastructure. Uh, but I can also educate. Uh, I can do a lot of training. I can support some activities. And I can cooperate. I must cooperate uh, with uh, scientists and with organizations like you. Uh, so our cooperation with IOPAN is, is a very good sample because uh, we can reinvest some portion of our income uh, to support you. And in return, I have the translation of the scientific language uh, to the language of common people, yes, society. Uh, and I think this is uh, the base for building this platform you mentioned. Uh, for uh, dividing, sharing the knowledge. Uh, for us, it's for us it's important because uh, most of most of my employees, my colleagues, understand what is happening and how we can support. Uh, so we started with very small, very small activities, and uh, after years, it was growing and growing. Uh, as I said, there is still a space for improvement. Uh, but thanks to to you. 
and uh, cooperation with IOPAN, uh, we understood a lot. And we also understand that uh, what we uh, delivering, so our product can support organizations like you. Uh, so you. it's it's also good. Perfect, perfect. Uh, would somebody else like to add to that? Uh, mm, yes, Martin? Maybe just a short point. I know that you are keen on football. Yes, so, definitely. Uh, about so, uh, interaction of uh, <laughs> interaction of uh, business, commerce, science, science, and uh, receivers of the product. So, people, uh, citizens, uh, we can say you will never walk alone. Uh, we have to to war work together and music to together. my heart. <laughs> Yes, Jan, would you like to comment on that? I don't want to comment on this, yeah. <laughs> we are the fans of different clubs. So. Yes, definitely. Okay, so, but we, we have the ability to discuss this issue, right? We, we have some, some um, important information from uh, our online uh, friends who are with us today. Uh, so what kind of competences? Uh, Open-mindedness, that's definitely good for any kind of uh, change that we need to deal with, impact on people, openness, active listening, determination. I think determination is, is one of the key words here. Uh, we, uh, Tomasz, when, we, when we, we have groups of, of uh, young students from, from the area, sometimes without determination, that would be difficult to, to go for the next one. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Some meetings are very difficult and determination keeps us doing more and more, right? Yeah, talk, talking to the, the wall. Yes, sometimes it's really, really not very successful meeting, but the determ determination keeps us alive. Uh, active listening, that's also that's also very important. Huge knowledge. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. Is this the competence that anyone can have huge knowledge? I think I, think I would say for me, a, a willingness and, and openness to learn things would be more important than, than having huge knowledge because huge knowledge is something terrifying to me. Do, do you know anyone with huge knowledge that you can think of I, and, and what does it mean? Speaking of, of sustainable development, for me, that, that's very, very diverse types of knowledge and, and having huge amount of such knowledge is probably impossible. Okay. Any other comments on that? Or should we go to that? So speaking of our cooperation with, uh, with Storeware, we, prior to this conference, we launched the uh, competition. And the competition uh, was uh, the ocean of changes and the ocean of changes we, uh, we asked for works from all over the world that were uh, supposed to employ internet tools, but also refer to the question like how do you think the, the the what do you think the the world will look like in 2050 uh, we got a quite a healthy number of of, of submissions from uh, different countries and we had a difficulty finding the the uh, uh, the winners but as always we have to we have to make such such decision and we did. So the winner is, I hope we have uh, the winners because that's two people uh, with us, uh, at least online. Uh, and here are the winners, Agata Kaminska and Martyna Wawrzycka. Would you like to comment on that? This is the work. Yeah, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for all who submitted the projects. Uh, there was a number of them. Uh, pretty much of them was pretty apocalyptic. Yeah, it was uh, a little bit uh, depressing. Uh, uh, what we gonna expect? Uh, however, uh, a lot of people was pretty inventive, and we decided to to give the first prize uh, to Agata Kaminska and Martina Wawrzycka from Poland 
because they presented uh, uh, very, very good animation about how we are treating the world and how people are closing uh, itself in, uh, in the capsules, a part of, a part of nature and the world around. Uh, it's also not so positive, uh, uh, but, uh, but maybe it will influence our approach. Uh, so great congratulations to the winners for running this with us. Yeah, so one thousand dollar goes to goes to ladies who won. But and we also have yes, another two three. recognitions because we we had quite a lot of um, uh, submissions, as I said, and we decided to give two recognitions. And these go to uh, these two gentlemen uh, on the left. I am too terrified to name their names. I, I would say Michael and Abiodun, and then to Patrick, Pavel, and Jakub. And we are very happy with these presentations as well. Uh, less apocalyptic, but, uh, but also they, they, they tell us a lot what we may expect in the future. So congratulations to them as well. Congratulations to all of the participants. The works were really interesting and we are very happy that, that so many people responded in really short time. So, uh, but of course, these, these are the winners. Uh, so please, all the three groups of winning, um, uh, please contact us again and we will do all the procedures with, with the check and, and the recognitions to you. Well, having said that. Of course, we make this project public on the website oceanofchanges.com. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. So, so you can see it and oceanofchanges.com we have the, the logo here and you and it's oceanofchanges.com so thank you very much to all the panelists thank you jan lydia Tomasz, and martin thank you uh, thank you we hope you. that we had lots of uh, viewers on on the internet since it's an internet governance forum and let's have a good week and productive week here and good luck to the next speakers thank you very much